Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. A friend of mine recommended that I do flan for my website and my YouTube channel. And I thought, you know, there, there are quadrillions of recipes for flan out there because people have been making custards and flans and creme brulees and creme caramels for quadrillions of years. Maybe that's too long. Let's just say gazillions of years. So I thought, how can I come up with a flan recipe that's ramped up? Something that's special, something that's different from the run of the mill generic flans you see every day. So what I came up with is a recipe that I'm calling almond praline flan, and it's really good. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to use. For the almond praline, I'm going to be using four ounces or 113 grams of almonds and about a third to a half of the rum caramel that I'm going to be making. For the rum caramel, I'm going to be using one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar, one half cup, 120 milliliters of dark rum, and one tablespoon of lemon juice. And then for the custard, I'm using two cups, about 475 milliliters of whole milk or half and half. I'm using half and half. One cup, 235 milliliters of heavy cream, five egg yolks, and then three whole large eggs. I'm gonna save the egg whites for making cat's tongues as a recipe for those cookies on the website. And then I have three quarters of a cup or 150 grams of granulated sugar and then finally two teaspoons of vanilla extract. First thing I want to do here is toast my almonds. You could do this by putting them in the oven, heat an oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 Celsius and roast them for 10 to 15 minutes. I think it's easiest to do it in a hot skillet. I have this over medium high heat. I'll probably reduce my heat now to medium. You have to watch them closely because they can scorch easily, especially after this pan really heats up. I can tell that they're doing well when I can start smelling the aroma of the toasting almonds. And I'll also see as I turn them over, I'll start to see some coloration, little dark spots showing up on the almonds. Sometimes you even hear them pop a little bit. So these will only take maybe a minute or two to be toasted. My next stage is to caramelize my sugar. So the way I do it is to make a simple syrup. Normally what you do is you make a simple syrup with water and sugar, and then you cook it until it starts to change color to a golden color. Because I'm using rum, it's already going to have a golden color. So I have to work a little bit differently. And there's my lemon juice. And then I'm just going to bring this up to a boil, kind of swish this around, swirl this around in the pan a little bit until the sugar dissolves. And what I'm going to be using is a digital thermometer to check my temperature. I want to bring this up to at least the candy hard crack stage, which is 310 degrees Fahrenheit 154 Celsius. To get a good caramelization going, I'm actually going to go up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 163 degrees Celsius. Because you can see this now has come up to a good rolling boil, so I'm going to turn my temperature down to about medium low. And one good indication that it's getting near the right temperature is when it starts to turn into a kind of a thick syrup. This sloshes around a lot now because there's a lot of water, or in this case water and alcohol, in this mixture. By boiling this and cooking this, what you're doing is you're, you're evaporating the water. You're taking the water off so that you get a concentration of sugar in there. The concentration gets thicker and thicker of sugar and that's when the temperature starts going up. My caramelized sugar now has come up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to put a little bit in the bottom of each bowl. You want to handle this very carefully because this is very hot. Now 
just to coat the bottom of each of these ramekins. And this will harden into a like a hard sugar candy. Okay, and then the rest of this I'm going to pour over my toasted almonds. This sugar is going to be hard coated inside the pan. I'm not going to wash this pan because I'm going to be making my custard in here. And this caramelized sugar will actually give me a little more flavor to my custard. I have in the meantime put the milk and cream in that saucepan and that's heating on the stove. I want to heat that up till it just about reaches the boiling point. Till it just starts to bubble. In the meantime I'm going to combine the sugar and the yolks and the eggs. Again, this is my five egg yolks and three whole large eggs. My milk is hot. I obviously don't want to dump a lot of hot milk in there because I'll cook the eggs and I'll end up with scrambled eggs here. So I'm going to temper my yolks, temper my eggs here by just introducing the milk a little at a time until I've got about a third to half of this hot milk in this mixture. Then I can just pour the egg mixture into the pan and it'll be fine. All right, so I'm just going to pour my egg mixture in there while I'm whisking. And then I want to just scrape this bowl because this usually some sugar in the bottom of the bowl. I might as well get all the good sugar in there. And then the last step is to put my vanilla in there and get some on the counter. All right, so that's my custard mixture. I am heating my oven to 350 degrees that is 177 degrees Celsius. You want to try to distribute this mixture as evenly as possible so that you have enough to fill all eight and then if you've got more left over you can top these off a little bit. So there are my ramekins now, eight of them filled. This is where I'm going to be pouring my water in again giving me room so I don't splash any kind of water, any water at all into my custards. If you want to you can use additional ramekins, fill them with water and set them in there to take up some space so that you're displacing some of the water. You, it won't take as much water to fill these pans up and if you splash water into this one who cares? It's just got water in it. So as soon as my oven comes up to temperature, I will be putting in the, these in the oven. They're going to go, I'm estimating, 35 to 45 minutes. One thing I should have mentioned is don't pour the water in now and then try to carry these with boiling hot water in them to the oven. Place them in the oven on a rack in the middle part of the oven without the water in. Pull the rack out a little bit when you place them in there and then pour the water into the pans while they're sitting in the oven. That way you won't splash any hot water on yourself and then very gently slide the rack back into the oven. After I put the ramekins in the oven I thought it might be useful to explain why a water bath and how much water to use. Water baths surround and protect delicate foods while they're cooking by maintaining a low, moist, even heat during cooking. The amount of water you want to use in a water bath for these ramekins is you want to bring the water in the pan that surrounds the ramekins up to about two-thirds of the way up the sides of your ramekins and that'll give you the protection that you need in the oven. I just checked my ramekins after 30 minutes and they were thoroughly cooked and at first I wondered why and then I realized what I had done that's different. Usually when I make these custards I'll make the custard mixture in advance, wrap it up with plastic, put it in the refrigerator, get back to it later on maybe the next day. 
So I'm putting cold custard mix into the ramekins before they go into the oven. Today, I put the mix in the ramekins warm from the pan, so naturally they're gonna cook in less time. So these cooked in 25, 30 minutes. What I did in the meantime now is I turn the oven off, I open the oven door, and I'm gonna let the, the ramekins sit in the oven for a while just to let them cool down and let that water cool down because I don't want to be taking pans out of the oven and possibly splashing boiling water on myself. So there are my cooked custards. I'm going to let these cool thoroughly at room temperature and then I'm going to put them in the refrigerator and chill them thoroughly. What needs to happen is the moisture from the custard needs to dissolve that caramelized sugar that's coating the bottom of each of these ramekins. If I invert this too soon, most of that sugar is still going to be hardened inside of the ramekins. So if you can wait overnight, maybe even 24 hours, more of that sugar is going to dissolve and become the syrup that when you've seen flan and it's turned over, there's this beautiful colored syrup that coats the, the custard. That's what you're after. That's only going to happen if that sugar has a chance to thoroughly dissolve and turn into a syrup. In the interest of saving time, I made four of these yesterday. One of them last night I inverted onto a plate to see how much of the sugar would dissolve underneath. Not a whole lot. So I decided it was really important to wait at least 24 hours. So these I cooked 24 hours ago. I'm going to plate these and then top them with the rum caramel almond praline that I made. And then the last step will be to see how good they taste. I broke up my praline pieces as best I could and put them in my food processor. I'm going to process these down. This is going to be really noisy to I don't know, a fairly fine powder. I don't want large pieces of that candy in my topping because it can almost cut. It's, some, it's sharp, it's hard, it's almost like glass. So I want a nice fine powder topping, maybe with a little bit of chunkiness to it, but not much. So I did chop this up fairly fine. There are some chunks of almonds in there. Some of the almonds didn't want to chop up all that fine, but that's fine. That'll give me a little bit of chunkiness, but mostly what I want is basically the consistency of almost like a sugar. Now how I would plate this, first of all, I took a knife and I went around the inside of this and just separated this from the side of its ramekin. This doesn't always just drop out nice and smoothly, as you can see. So what I always, what I do is I just give it a really good, like one whomp, like that, without hitting the, the table, just to encourage it to fall out. And there is our flan, a little bit of sugar left in the bottom of the bowl, that's fine. And then, if you have some of these round cutters, I really like these round cutters, what I like to do to control the flow of the praline is just place one on top that'll fit on top. Put a little bit of our praline mixture in there. Distribute it. Then lift the ring off like so. And that controls where this praline is going to fall so that you don't have praline crumbs all around the side of the plate. I think that looks a little bit neater, a little bit nicer. So there it is. Let's do one more. I want to do, I want to show you a close-up of this. So there's a nice close-up of our flan with the rum caramel sauce and our rum caramel almond praline. That is beautiful. Can't wait to see how it's going to taste. There it is. <laughs> I know this is going to taste good because I love custard and I've made custard before. But this is the first time that I caramelized sugar with rum. 
So this is really special. Mmm. Smooth, light, delicious, and that praline and the rum just gives it a little bit of extra sweetness and kick. That's excellent. So excuse me, I got to go enjoy my almond rum praline flan. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.